The Government of Canada sincerely apologizes and asks the forgiveness of the Aboriginal peoples of this country for failing them so profoundly. Nous le regrettons, we are sorry. Nimi Tatenan, Nimi Jinoe Samin, Mamiak Tugut. The memories of residential schools sometimes cut like merciless knives at our souls. This day will help us to put that pain behind us. I am filled with optimism that this action by the Government of Canada and the generosity in the words chosen to convey this apology will help us all mark the end of this dark period in our collective history as a nation. Well, who paid are those young people that went? People like Don, people like myself, we paid. On June 11, 2008, the Prime Minister of Canada offered a formal apology to former students of the Indian residential school system. In a historic gesture, the Prime Minister apologized on behalf of the government for the pain and suffering endured by former students of Indian residential schools and for the damaging effects the schools had on Aboriginal culture, heritage and language. Mr. Speaker, I stand before you today to offer an apology to former students of Indian residential schools. The treatment of children in Indian residential schools is a sad chapter in our history. In the 1870s, the federal government, partly in order to meet its obligations to educate Aboriginal children, began to play a role in the development and administration of these schools. Two primary objectives of the residential school system were to remove and isolate children from the influence of their home, families, traditions, and cultures, and to assimilate them into the dominant culture. These objectives were based on the assumption that Aboriginal cultures and spiritual beliefs were inferior and unequal. Indeed, some saw it, as was infamously said, to kill the Indian in the child. Today we recognize that this policy of assimilation was wrong, has caused great harm, and has no place in our country. Most schools were operated as joint ventures with Anglican, Catholic, Presbyterian, and United Churches. The Government of Canada built an educational system in which very young children were often forcibly removed from their homes, often taken far from their communities. Many were inadequately fed, clothed, and housed. All were deprived of the care and nurturing of their parents, grandparents, and communities. First Nations, Inuit, and Métis languages and cultural practices were prohibited in these schools. Tragically, some of these children died while attending residential schools, and others never returned home. The government now recognizes that the consequences of the Indian residential schools policy were profoundly negative, and that this policy has had a lasting and damaging impact on Aboriginal culture, heritage, and language. While well, some former students have spoken positively about their experiences at residential schools, these stories are far overshadowed by tragic accounts of the emotional, physical, and sexual abuse and neglect of helpless children and their separation from powerless families and communities. The legacy of Indian residential schools has contributed to social problems that continue to exist in many communities today. It has taken extraordinary courage for the thousands of survivors that have come forward to speak publicly about the abuse they suffered. 
It is a testament to their resilience as individuals and to the strengths of their cultures. Regrettably, many former students are not with us, not with us today, and died never having received a full apology from the Government of Canada. The government recognizes that the absence of an apology has been an impediment to healing and reconciliation. Therefore, on behalf of the Government of Canada and all Canadians, I stand before you in this chamber so vital, so central to our existence as a country to apologize to Aboriginal peoples for the role the Government of Canada played in, Indian, in the Indian residential schools system. To the approximately 80,000 living former students and all family members and communities, the Government of Canada now recognizes that it was wrong to forcibly remove children from their homes, and we apologize for having done this. We now recognize that it was wrong to separate children from rich and vibrant cultures and traditions, that it created a void in many lives and communities, and we apologize for having done this. We now recognize that in separating children from their families, we undermine the ability of many to adequately parent their own children and sow the seeds for generations to follow. And we apologize for having done this. We now recognize that far too often, these institutions gave rise to abuse or neglect and were inadequately controlled. And we apologize for failing to protect you. Not only did you suffer these abuses as children, but as you became par parents, you were powerless to protect your own children from suffering the same experience. And for this, we are sorry. The burden of this experience has been on your shoulders for far too long. The burden of this experience is properly ours as a government and as a country. There is no place in Canada for the attitudes that inspired the Indian residential school system to ever prevail again. You have been working on recovering from this experience for a long time. And in a very real sense, we are now joining you on this journey. The Government of Canada sincerely apologizes and asks the forgiveness of the Aboriginal peoples of this country for failing them so profoundly. Nous le regrettons. We are sorry. Nimi Tatenan, Nimi Jinoe Samin, Mamiak Tugut. In moving towards healing, reconciliation, and resolution of the sad legacy of Indian residential schools, the implementation of the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement began on September 19, 2007. Years of work by survivors, communities, and Aboriginal organizations culminated in an agreement that gives us a new beginning and an opportunity to move forward together in partnership. The cornerstone of the settlement agreement is the Indian Residential Schools Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This commission represents a unique opportunity to educate all Canadians on the Indian Residential Schools system. It will be a positive step in forging a new relationship between Aboriginal peoples and other Canadians, a relationship based on the knowledge of our shared history, a respect for each other, and a desire to move forward with a renewed understanding that strong families, strong communities, and vibrant cultures and traditions will contribute to a stronger Canada for all of us. God bless all of you. God bless our land. This day testifies to nothing less than the achievement of the impossible. This morning, our elders held a condolence ceremony for those who never heard an apology, never received compensation, yet courageously fought assimilation so that we could witness this day. Together, we remember and honor them. 
For it was they who suffered the most as they witness generation after generation of their children taken from their families' love and guidance. For the generations that will follow us, we bear witness today in this house that our survival as First Nations peoples in this land is affirmed forever. We heard the Government of Canada take full responsibility for this dreadful chapter in our shared history. We heard the Prime Minister declare that this will never happen again. Finally, we heard Canada say, it is sorry. The memories of residential schools sometimes cut like merciless knives at our souls. This day will help us to put that pain behind us. The apology today is founded upon, more than anything else, the recognition that we all own our own lives and destinies, the only true foundation for a society where peoples can flourish. We must now capture a new spirit and vision to meet the challenges of the future. I reach out to all Canadians today in this spirit of reconciliation. Miigwech. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, I have to face you to say this because it comes from the bottom of my heart. It took great courage for you to express your sorrow and apology to our people, to the Inuit, to First Nations, and to Métis, and we thank you for it. I am one of these people that have dreamed for this day, and there have been times in this long journey when I despaired that this would never happen. I am filled with hope and compassion for my fellow Aboriginal Canadians as I stand among them here with you and your fellow ministers today. I am also filled with optimism that this action by the Government of Canada and the generosity in the words chosen to convey this apology will help us all mark the end of this dark period in our collective history as a nation. There is much hard work to be done. We need the help and support of all thoughtful Canadians and our governments to rebuild strong, healthy families and communities. This can only be achieved when dignity, confidence and respect for traditional values and human rights once again become part of our daily lives and are mirrored in our relationship with governments and other Canadians. I stand here today ready to work with you, as Inuit have always done, to craft new solutions and new arrangements based on mutual respect and mutual responsibility. Thank you, and may wisdom and compassion guide our efforts. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Métis Nation, I want to express a deep sense of thanks and gratitude to the Prime Minister for today offering this most sincere apology to those people who have experienced the Indian residential school system. It's been a long time in coming, but it has been well received, and I hope and I pray that it will resonate in the communities of those people who have been affected. I am one of the, the survivors of a Métis residential school, which was no different than Indian residential schools, except for the question of who paid. Well, who paid are those young people 
that went. People like Don, people like myself, we paid. This is a day for all Canadians. It's a day for us to move forward. And I know, deep in my heart, that the party leaders and the Prime Minister who spoke today spoke with sincerity. It's deep and it's real. Prior to the residential school system, prior to colonization, the women in our communities were very well respected and honoured for the role that they have in our communities as being the life givers, of being the caretakers of the spirit that we bring into this mother, our earth. We've been given those responsibilities to look after our children and to bring that spirit into this physical world. Residential school caused so much harm to that respect and to that honour. You know, we've given thanks to you for your apology. And that I have to also give you credit for standing up. I didn't see any other governments before today to come forward and apologize. So I do thank you for that. This day is about the survivors and those of you in the gallery. I'm proud to be here sitting on this floor and representing some of you. And I want you to know that even though you've attended residential schools, in my heart and in my soul, you are true role models. Because because of your resi resiliency, your courage, and your strength, you have made me the strong Aboriginal Algonquin Canadian that I am today, and others across this great land of ours. And surely, in a country that the, the entire world knows because of its great opportunities, hope, surely that belongs to those to which it was taken so long ago. And today, for me personally, is it not only a great day to be an Aboriginal person or an Algonquin, but I'm proud to be an Aboriginal Canadian. Miigwech. The Prime Minister's recognition of wrongdoings within Indian residential schools marked a major step forward in healing and repairing Canada's relationship with Aboriginal people. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission, a component of the Indian Residential Schools Settlement Agreement, is a cornerstone of the settlement agreement. It will help forge that new relationship between Aboriginal peoples and other Canadians. Rooted in a shared history, respect and understanding between Aboriginal peoples and the country as a whole.